Calamity is a long mod. It can take at least 50 hours of your life if that's your first rodeo with a mod. And dear god, is it difficult. So I came up with a photo of making it less complicated, more digestible for a person that instead of a half a day has only half an hour to spare. Today I'll be attempting to pass through every event, boss, basically everything mod has to offer, at least in the pre-hard mode, in master mode for the war v, aka the legendary difficulty. To torture myself even further, I'll mostly play on death mode, a uh, difficulty provided by the Calamity mod, which changes some boss patterns, reworks AI, and overall makes game even harder. And you know, I know a guy who's absolutely perfect fit for this job. Wow, this promises to be fun. I start and immediately come to realization that World's Gen hates me as it traps me with pools of lava that momentarily are a little bit difficult to cross, so instead of exploring further, I decided to build myself a house and endure the ever-growing army of slimes who, thanks to the death mode, are me instantly hostile to me. Hell, I got so panicked that I made a wooden armor, famous for not having any defense on the leg part. With no other option, I decided to mine down, and soon enough, I found myself a mine shaft, which leads nowhere. After a shocking discovery, I returned to the surface and waited out the night. On the very next day, I decided to explore the world with some World War One style trenches, and I was able to figure out that I was literally surrounded by giant trees, and thus loot in form of a living wood placer. Yeah, right into the garbage it goes. Fast forward, I upgraded to a tungsten bow and iron arbor and stumbled across a mushroom biome, which is conveniently placed literally below my spawn. <laughs> Talk about luck. I also discovered the desert and the shrine, and I found the amulet of chi accessory. Wow. After returning to my home, I crafted the vault from Blunderboss, which is a gun, sure, but it's not a good gun. It's like a doom handgun, only to serve you until we find something better. Oh yeah, I have also forgotten about the class. So in Calamity we have a couple of choices. You can become either the average Kayan fan, be boring, be a masochist, roleplay as a plantation owner in the 1800s, or an average King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard fan. And obviously for the maximum pain I had chosen the Ranger, as this is the, well, at least what people tell me, the worst class in the mod due to its poor scaling. But of course they are wrong, because with the power of money, I can change that! Soon after that I upgrade to the Desert Prowler armor, which is the first armor tailored for the range class specifically, and discover Burning Gum on the other side of the map. Later on I continue to explore the mushroom biome, which leads to a quite a large amount of me dying. And I also discovered that mother slimes are in fact brood mothers because on their death they drop like 20 baby slimes thanks to the master mode. Really cool. Also what is pretty lucky is that the glowing moss biome, is that even a biome, is directly below the mushroom biome. So I guess I had a pretty good light show. After that I decided to organize my spawn by replacing the dead with some stone bricks and then erecting a tower by the lava lake. Once again, six feet under, I encountered a lost girl and promptly asked her to like and subscribe to me, to which she replied with dying of cringe. And then I decided, fuck it, let's see if I can pull off a heist, and probably took my bombs and went to Burningham and got to the shadow orbs to get a musket. Very conveniently, there was an uninfected cave which allowed me to dig up very closely to the underground and bomb my way to the orbs to get the weapon to surpass my golden ball. But what is Birmingham exactly in this universe? Don't worry about it, I'll explain when it comes to the bosses. And then the Blood Moon came and uh... 12 seconds later... Yeah, it was a little bit problematic, as the monster response was increased by the casual 400%. 
Uh, it was a little bit overwhelming for sure, but then I realized that I can just blow up the undead that I bring onto my door and thus make fat stacks of cash in the process. <laughs> Got a platinum Thank out of it. <laughs> also, it's just satisfying to see thousands and thousands of zombies being knocked back. With the Blood Moon being done, I can craft the Ultra Kill status Machine. gun. And after that, I attempted to reach the ocean on the left side of the map, which, let's just say, didn't go well. Same goes for the right side as well. And after that, I got the Goblin Invasion, which, to say the least, I wasn't prepared for it at all. Because the only thing that I had to my name were a musket and the cracked short cold, which made the invasion pain to deal with. The silver lining was that at least I got a harpoon out of it, the harpoon being a ranged weapon for some reason. Wait, was it always a ranged weapon? Hang on. Yeah, it was actually always a ranged weapon. Huh. Who the funk? Following the slaughter of my compound, I decided to explore some of the underground desert, and I got pretty lucky as I almost immediately found myself a Luxor's gift, which is going to help me with my DPS a lot. And so we found ourselves on the first boss, that being the Desert Scourge, who's um... <laughs> Yeah, he didn't really go very well, to say the least. The skunk beat me so hard that I decided to screw it, let's explore instead. And so I traveled through the ice biome, Detroit, jungle, and finally ended my journey on the ocean proper, and no, I haven't found anything interesting at the bottom if you are asking. After returning to the spawn, I decided this would be a good time to make the travel easier and thus begin to construct the wayway system, which will extend from one edge of the world to another and will help me with one encounter, but let's save that for later. Anyway, another goblin invasion arrived and because I possessed a mini shark, it got promptly kicked out of without much trouble. Then I tried to beat Scourge again and it didn't work, and because of it I decided to extend the arena a little bit, which at the time was a decent idea, but in retrospect it kinda backfired, as the boss now will sometimes despawn, which is always fun, especially if it got him pretty low. After those failed fights, because of course I failed those, I explored the underground desert, where I reached the sunken sea, which left me a little bit baffled, as the terrain was destructible now? Huh. Odd, I recall it being impossible to break before the skirt has been defeated, interesting. Through the sunken sea, I reached the jungle, and with it, the temple and the arena that is meant to be used during the Plantera fight, called Vernal Pass. See, Calamity added two arenas that are meant to be intended arenas for bosses, Vernal Pass being one of them, and the other one being the Forsaken Archive, which is so forsaken that I think it didn't generate on this world, which is going to make fighting Poltergast really interesting. Well, that's or I haven't searched my dungeon hard enough, who knows really. I also decided to take a look at planetoids, only to discover that every single one has lava and spikes of both varieties instead of the usual stuff in it, which frankly sucks to be honest. A couple of failed attempts on Desert Scourge life later, and I literally snap and I do what I didn't want it to do. Hello guys, not the Gif here, welcome to my fishing stream. As you can see, we have very exciting gameplay over here. Oh gee, I'm about to fall asleep from this excitement! Woo! Now kid, don't try this at home. And yes, I obtained the reverse shark, and I can proceed with the second phase of my plan, which is digging straight down to hell in order to obtain Hellstone and thus make Molten Fury as Calamity rebuff the reverse shark back to 100% pickaxe power. As it should. Long story short, I got bored or distracted halfway through and decided to go to the jungle instead and find the boomstick, which took an excruciating amount of time and chests to find. Now you might ask, did it help me in fighting the desert scourge? Uh, no, it did not. The next night was another Blood Moon, which means a massive increase in my capital, and since Goblin Tinkerer is now in my excuse of a base, I have something to smite my money on. Absolutely glorious. After that, I finally made my way to the Underworld, where I started digging up some Hellstone and I crafted the Molten Fury which had the Unreal prefix. 
And if that's not the sign from God, I don't know what else it could it be. Equipped with Jester Arrows and practically the best bow in pre-hard mode, I was ready to face the Desert Scourge one last time. And then I died. And again. In frustration, I decided that Desert Prowler armor wasn't enough and went on to search for fossils to craft the fossil armor and it didn't help as I got dumped by the dry worm. Twice, in fact. And then something weird happened as I of Cthulhu appeared and honestly the fight went really well. Compared to the vanilla, the eye was way more aggressive and transitioned to the second pace way faster and because of it I died, but it gave me an idea. What if I can just use rail tracks to cheese it and yeah, it worked. The eye got destroyed. With my morale at an all-time high, I marched on to face the desert beast once more and I finally did it. The scorch was finally gone, reduced to... well, not ashes, more like gore because it's terraria, but whatever. After the defeat of the eye and the worm, an acid rain appeared. This is an event that can be compared to Old One's army, however, the enemies are themed around pollution and atom. When certain bosses are defeated, the event gets harder and you get better loot out of it. Currently, the only thing I can get are scales, which allow me to make one of the better rogue armors for pre-hard mode, and a toxic bow, which shoots toxic arrows that inflict a debuff, and uh, that's it. Birmingham was next on the list if it comes to clearing, and is hell to say the least. So the whole biome is basically one big love letter to Lovecraft's color out of space, where sickness is spreading across the land, corrupting everything that comes into contact with it, turning things into eaters of souls, who are in fact not born from pure malice, they are just consumers of rent a manga, which explains their eagerness to defend their territory. At the start of the game they are arguably the most dangerous enemy that you come across, but in this stage they are not really threatening at all, they all get pretty much stunlocked by the mini sharks, so eh, who cares about them. Other than eaters, we also have devourers, who spawn as infrequently as your dad coming back from the gas station, and that's it, unless you want to count him. the corrupted variants of goldfishes, penguins, and bunnies, I guess. Anyway, outside of that we also have shadow warps, which can be broken for some loot, including your first guy in the vanilla game, that being the musket among other things, and if you break three orbs, the corruption exclusive boss will spawn, namely the Eater of Worlds, who has such an uncreative name that I literally have to google how it's called. Anyway, it's also a boss enemy, which makes it even less interesting. <laughs> Back to the topic. Either is a boring boss that is made more aggressive on death mode, with 69 segments for you to destroy, a feat that I sadly wasn't able to accomplish. Yes, this is the point of the playthrough where I started to experiment a little bit with difficulties. Up to this point everything was played on death mode, but due to underlying skill issues and my sanity, I decided to tone down the difficulty, because I know what will come later, and I know those things will probably scar me until the end of my life. In other words, Eater of Worlds was defeated on normal master mode without any additions, but then again it's still master mode, so at least I still get my trophy, right? Reddit is the calamity added boss that has an interesting way to summon. See, Birmingham will randomly spit out those weird things called hive tumors, and if you destroy them, the hive mind will appear in its full glory. And if you had fought Brain of Cthulhu from the Crimson, you basically know the fight. They are both brain-like entities, they both have minions that protect them, and both charge at you in the second phase, but, you know, hive mind is just more difficult because it's calamity and stuff. It's not bad, but in my opinion, the perforators, the crimson counterpart for the hive mind, are way, way more creative, and they have, at least in my opinion, a better theme, albeit both are pretty similar. Whereas filthy mind, the hive mind's theme is fast, unrelenting, and makes your skin itchy and creates goosebumps. <laughs> Blood Coagulant is just... terrifying, honestly. <laughs> you 
usage of high tones, lower tuning, an overall chaotic feeling makes your blood boil, which honestly is an intended part from the Endokuro in 16 in Mono. During that time, I also decided to towel beat Lenin, who, after overdosing on drugs, turned himself into a fungus infested crab. <laughs> Funniest shit I've ever seen. Uh, this one has a lot of bullet hell lot of ants in it, especially in death mode, however, the most defining feature of this fight is once again the music, which is just so... different compared to anything else. As DM Dokuro said himself, he wanted to make it as strippy as possible, and honestly he made a damn good job at it. <laughs> doesn't last very long as I'm way way past the internet progression point for him. However, what was useful was the accessory that dropped from him, the absolute MVP of this playthrough, the fungal clamp which summoned a... Uh, well, a fungal clamp that healed me and thus saved me from many st sticky situations. Oh yeah, also in before saying that it's not a ranged weapon, it technically is one as it scales with the best class damage so... Yeah, I'm still technically pure range character if you discount all those bats and bees that I accidentally kill with my pickaxe or something. Anyway, I also tried to kill King Slime and, uh... Uh... Yeah, I might have a slight feeling that he might be slightly unbalanced in Death Legendary as he is huge! Like, land whale levels of thickness, to the point of me literally not having any idea where his hitbot started and ended, honestly. After beating the Eater of Worlds, I get another goblin invasion, which is just a resident sleeper at this point, and I get beaten by hive mind so hard that I'd out of throw from the game. Whoops. Eventually, after like 15 attempts, I finally managed to beat him, <laughs> and finally can move on from this godforsaken biome. Quite literally. After the defeat of the Calamity's evil boss, I am granted access to superior arms, arms and soldiers, in the form of aerial life or a material with a new fancy digging up sound, and that's about it. Actually, I think I literally forgot to make anything out of this, bearing the Aqua Shard shotgun, the upgraded boomstick, the Gale Force, the aerial life bow, and the taser, which belongs to the funky Dreon's arsenal. Those weapons are few and far between, and working batteries mean that you will have to charge them in order for them to deal the most damage and, you know, work. Uh, curiously, most of the guns in, of this category are references to Fallout, with things like plasma casters, laser rifles and gauss rifles being scattered across the progression. I decided to dip my toes into some honey and, uh, dear lord, what did I feed this bee with? This is ridiculous! B-Movie is the boss of the pre-hard mode jungle and it's known for not disappearing when you leave the jungle, which makes it pretty humorous until you realize that you are fighting an enraged version of it and die. Death modes made her charges faster and projectiles faster, making this version virtually impossible to deal with for a Sunday Calamity player like myself. Feeling defeated, I opted to fight the more demanding boss, the Skeletor. What? And in here, I didn't even try to attempt the death mode version of the fight, and... Huh, I kinda... I kinda regret this now, because it sounds incredible. Anyway, Skelly Boy is self-explanatory. It's a big skull with two arms, for if you are fighting him on death mode, who wants to crush you with them? Due to the changes in expert and master modes, you literally have to take down his arms before taking down the skull, which makes the fight more engaging, a little bit at least, although in my opinion, the fight on Revengeance, the in-between of death and stock difficulties, is pretty much the best rendition of this fight. The skull is literally invincible and you have to destroy the arms in order to hurt it. Once you are done with it, you can finally hurt it, however, the skull itself has a couple of tricks like shooting skulls and fireballs at ya. Overall, it's a great fight. J just a shame that every single time I die, I have to wait like 10 minutes to repeat the fight, which makes me a little bit loony during that time, let's just put it like that. So much so that I just gave up at some point and got Cosmolite. 
a hard mode tool that allows me to change time and honestly I apologize for cheating like this, however, I just didn't have enough patience to sit through like 2 hours of just attempting the skeleton fight. I'm also human and I don't really want to spend my entire life waiting for the old man to respawn. After beating the big boss, I gain access to the dungeon, which is basically a Doom level in a 2D style. You have hazardous environments, arenas, key hunting, weapon pickups, and the only thing that ruins the illusion is that the demons are replaced by skeletons, but then again, both are mortally challenged, so who cares really. After my disadventures in the dungeon, I was ready to face the abyss. No, wait, no, I wasn't. I needed to get the siren accessory, which is going to help me in traversing the abyss. <coughs> So what I like to get before descending into the Mariana Trench is the Aquatic Heart, not to be confused with the Atomic Heart. This accessory grants you water breathing, freezes your enemies if they touch you or vice versa, grants you a shield, and overall it's one of the strongest accessories in the game, especially given that you can get it before fighting any boss. Sure, before Skeletor's death is virtually useless, but the point still stands, it's very, very strong. The only downside is that the mob that the said accessories drop from, creatively named triple question marks, is as rare as my dad not making barbecue on the weekend and pissing everyone off in the process. Also, don't worry about Tanihita and the Leviathan, we will come back for them eventually. Now in Detroit, we descend further and further and eventually found ourselves in a dark place which you never were supposed to be in. The Abyss is probably my favorite feature of Calamity, ever. It's a great concept, it expands on the game mechanics, the vanilla game never dared to cross, that being incredibly deep and expansive water biomes, has a unique mechanic of detection, which in a grand scheme of things, yes it doesn't do that much, but it's still something to pay attention to, as the fish in this place are a little bit strong to say the least. Abyss is divided into four layers, which are a little bit more varied thanks to a recent rework. Sulfuronic Depths is a mostly peaceful layer, where you firsthand can see how well your accessories can work in this place. If you run out of breath in this layer, trust me, turn back and get some better equipment because you are not going to survive in the second layer, where the Abyss proper starts. Murky Waters is a second layer, and it contains the loot that we are after, namely the Artifice and the best light pit in the Terraria, hands down. The third layer, Feral Vents, is all about Scoria, which is a hard mode material that is used post Golem as well as having the most unnerving song in the entire mod, that being... Ah shit. Is it... Is peop are people going to be pissed off when I'm going to mispronounce it? I mean, it's not technically pronounceable by a human person, so whatever, relech, let's, let's go, let's stay with that, yeah, relech, let's go. This layer also shares mobs with the fourth layer, the void, which is a dark and eerie place with hardly any life in it. Also, trust me, do not use Rod of Discord in at the abyss, unless you want to be a worm food. Out of that hellhole, I went into the ice biome in search of the Drayan's lap, as unlike the other ones, this one actually has meaningful loot that isn't going to be obsolete or used in the post rival phase of the game. With that being the arctic diving gear, which makes the abyss exploration even easier, although we are done with that place for now. After defeating Skeletron, we are introduced to the new NPC, the Bandit, who is selling various rogue items, which usually I would be ecstatic about as rogue is my favorite class in Calamity, but not today. The silver lining is that her order feature, namely Refund, which allows you to become back your money from that green gremlin that claims to improve your items and just can't fathom that melee speed is not important for a ranged character! Time for the third, last boss, the Slime God. This is Calamity's culmination of all pre-hard bosses, and it consists of three parts. The Ebonian and Cremelian Slimes, those two big ones, and the Slime God himself. Itself? Itself. You'll have to destroy the two big ones, and then the Slime God will be like, understandable, have a nice day, and F off to god knows where, leaving loot behind. Given the fact that, you know, unlike the death mode king slime, those aren't Godzilla side slimes, they are pretty easy to handle, in fact, I have a pretty good cheese for them. Remember that railway line? 
Yeah, you can just pretty much use it to never be in reach of bosses' attacks and thus easily win if you are careful enough and not allow slimes to despawn, because of course they despawn, it's a terraria boss, what do you expect? With slime gun defeated, I can finally enact my revenge on Queen Bee, and she's uh, a bit underwhelming as a boss at this point. She basically has two moves, she can either charge at you or throw projectiles at you. Depending on the mood, it's going to be either Giant Stinger, which for some reason was ultra bright, for me, or her babies, which is pretty metal if I do say so myself. Before we tackle the final boss of this stage of the game, we also have the Don't Starve crossover boss, the Deer Clubs, and oh boy, I suppose it's a hot take, but really, fuck this boss in particular. Remember how a certain influencer said that the Terraria devs didn't shy away from difficulty on this one? Yeah, that's bullshit, because the only thing that is difficult about Deer Clubs is not to throw your PC out of the window or fall asleep. The attacks are hard to dodge, which sure makes the fight a little bit engaging, however my main grab with the fight is the damn invulnerability that the Deer Clubs gained at certain periods, essentially killing the pacing of the fight for no other reason than to piss me off. And now you might be saying that the Calamity might have done something to it, and uh, actually no. No. It's only... I think Fapsul and crew never actually touched the Earclops, which is kind of amazing. Uh, anyway, let's just move on already. It's not worth it's not worth it. It's just not worth wasting time on this boss. And we reach the least fun part of the game, that being the Wall of Flesh Breath. Oh boy. For that I bought like 3000 planter boxes and just started to plant them all over the underworld. After buying buffs and crafting the best bow for pre-hard mode, I stand across the wall of flesh, which is just a big wall with two eyes and a mouth. The main gimmick of the fight on the master mode is that the segments that you are supposed to shoot are smaller and that is faster, has more health, blah blah, standard master mode stuff. I fought it for the first time and it didn't work out well to say the least, and I had to repeat the fight a couple of times, with me eventually fighting the Brimstone Crag biome in one of the attempts, which I gotta say looks pretty different compared to the last time I've been here. And you might be wondering, why is this place even here? Well, it's time to talk about the lore of the mod a little bit. With each boss skill, aside from the Master Mode relics and loot bags, we are also given lore items, which give us some insight into those individuals or places. Set items are written from the perspective of Yaren, the main antagonist of the mod. Now I want to say that I won't be going through every single piece of lore because we would be here all day honestly, but I will be picking up more interesting parts, at least in my opinion. But hey, if you want the entirety of the lore being told, I'm probably not the guy to do so anyway, let's just put it like that. Anyway. Azarfur, because that's the name of this place, is a pretty simple place lore-wise. It used to be a prosperous city, but then the Brimstone Elemental, a boss that we will have the dubious pleasure of fighting in the hard mode, awoke and started burning the place to the ground. To Poser, the Witch Calamitas was sent, and I guess they took fight fire with fire to their hearts as they burnt out the world to the ground, leaving it in the state we currently see it in. Who is Calamitas? Well, don't exactly worry about this, we'll get to her eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Oh god. After three more failures, I get back to the slime god because I needed to obtain the gunk shot. A shotgun-like gun that allows me to combine meteor shots to give me a better chance against the wall. And after that failure and an actual mental breakdown, I corrected my cosplay and with power of the corrected cosplay, I managed to came up with an ingenious idea of starting the fight on the opposite side of the platform, which proven to be a very good idea indeed, as the wall finally was dead. <clears throat> anyway, that's that's all for today, folks. See ya next week. Probably.